Shalom, pit bulls. We all know it. You sit on the bus next to a junkie, look out the window and feel like dirt. Public transportation just sucks. Solution to the problem? Your own car. Unfortunately, a car costs a lot of money, then is unreliable and swallows more than my ex-girlfriend on the college basketball team. To save you from prostituting yourself at the truck driver gas station, I present to you today 11 reliable cars for under $10,000. As a note up front, these cars will eventually affect your sex life. Whether positive or negative, it remains to be seen. Let's start with the BMW E65 LCI from 2005. This German was so ugly at launch that even the Yanks called it ugly. And that has to mean something, I mean, we have the rednecks. Since production began in 2001, the E65's face has changed more times over the years than Kylie Jenner's. During the life cycle impulse, which is what BMW calls its model update by the way, in 2005, the E65 wasn't quite so ugly anymore. In addition to the visual improvement, its electronics and iDrive system were improved. BMW stuffed the car with everything that the innovation had forbidden at the time, and BMW typically there were various electronic problems. Now this is not to say that all BMW 7 Series are bad, but just very expensive to fix. The LCI was less prone to problems, so do the check and inspect the car very carefully. With good maintenance, you will usually have few problems. And the good thing about it all is, this model can be had in usable condition starting at about $6,000. This leaves enough buffer for possible repairs and or necessary tuning measures. For the E65, go straight for the 730D, a 3-liter inline 6 with turbocharging and 231 horsepower. The 740i and 750i are also good alternatives. But it's all about getting the best bang for the buck. And V8 engines aren't exactly known for being cheap to run. If you want to be macho, go for the V8, but don't cry later when you have to rely on the aforementioned truck driver's gas station. Let's continue with the VW Phaeton GP3 from 2008. The VW Phaeton is comparable to the child of your new girlfriend. It's there, you accept it, and still try to block it out as best as possible. Because of the VW symbol, you always think that you are driving a Golf. Probably that was the knockout criterion why the car was so unpopular. But the truth is that this car is identical to the Bentley Continental. That means that in terms of quality standards, you're in Bentley territory. At the time, former VW CEO Ferdinand Persch wanted to set new quality standards in the luxury class with the Phaeton. Admittedly, the first models were somewhat problematic in terms of electricity. But over time, there were some major product updates, that is, facelifts. Specimens from 2008 onwards are generally reliable. Here we have the most powerful engine with 239 horsepower, enough to drive away from your stepfather responsibilities. From 2011, the optics will also include LED technology. Of course, it is still expensive if something breaks, but if you put that in relation to what you get, it is definitely worth the money. With regular care, you usually have little to worry about. Models from 2008 on are available starting at about $5,000. Models from 2011 onward, on the other hand, can be had for as little as $10,000. With a little luck and oral persuasion, however, it's entirely possible to get a model for cheap. Nearly 90% of Phaetons sold were 3-liter diesels. There are V6, V8, and V12 gasoline engines. But due to the vehicle's weight of over 2.5 tons, these are less recommended if you want to keep maintenance costs low. Let's continue with a gook. The Lexus GS 450 HS19 from 2005. Lexus is a Toyota brand and they are known for producing true endurance runners. Even after years, they still run without problems. So if you value quality and reliability, Lexus is the right choice for you. Toyota is not the leader in reliability and hybrid technology for nothing. The good thing is, it just works. Especially in the GS 450H. Here you get a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine with a scant 300 horsepower and a battery. That combines for a system output of 345 horsepower with fuel economy of under 8 liters. In its basic configuration, this car was also quite lavishly equipped. Alternatively, there is also the GS300, a 3 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine with 249 horsepower. If you want a vehicle with few problems and good driving comfort, you are best served there. There are few dissatisfied Lexus drivers in the world for a reason. Most of them are only bothered by the looks, but that is a matter of taste. Take a test drive and decide for yourself. 
In the end, a test drive is nothing more than an engagement. If you realize that it does not buck, you are still committed to nothing. Sorry ladies, but it is worth it in any case. The price starts at about $6,500. The maintenance costs are also very manageable, since you only have to change wear parts with normal care. Usually Lexus drivers are very careful with their vehicles because they are usually a bit older. We continue with the Audi A5 3.0 TDI 8T from 2007. The Audi A5 was then one of the first production cars that had daytime running lights with LED. The performance, reliability, and quality of this vehicle are at a high level. From the design point of view, the car is still an eye-catcher and offers great tuning possibilities. You can separate yourself from the masses in terms of performance and appearance, and for manageable money. Try the 3.0 TDI engine. For its 239 horsepower, it's very nippy on the road. Thanks to 500 Newton meters, a 2007 Mercedes C63 AMG W204 has 600 Newton meters for comparison and no all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive, that is Quattro, is standard on the 3.0. In terms of price, it starts at around $7,000. The 2.7 TDI engines are already available from $6,000. These are identical in construction to the 3.0 TDI, but have less power and less displacement. However, this can be balanced out relatively easily with chip tuning. Avoid, in any case, the Multitronic transmission. It is not considered reliable and is very expensive to repair. We'll stick with the Germans because they simply know how to build cars. The Mercedes E-Class W212 from 2009 was a real eye-catcher back then and has aged gracefully in my opinion. Quite the opposite of Paul Walker, who hasn't necessarily aged since 2013. Anyways, with the W212, it actually doesn't even matter which engine choice you take, as all engines are very solid. In general, the model is inconspicuous in problems, so it's not uncommon for these cars to have tachometers of well over 500,000 kilometers and still be running. Still, like any other vehicle, maintenance is the name of the game. Basically, you can buy more reasonable models starting around $7,000 to $8,000. For those of you who can wrench, there is also the option of a facelift conversion. An expert would charge you $3,000 for this. At the end of the day, whether it's worth it is a question of price. It depends on how cheap you can get the parts and the car. Let's move on to my favorite on this list. The latest technology and most innovative design is available with the BMW 520 diesel F11. Even after almost nine years, this vehicle is very timeless in terms of design. You could say that you only get a 2-liter diesel with 184 horsepower, but this engine is very satisfying. Should it be too little, a chip tuning is always recommended for diesel engines. Many will advise you against it, but a well-kept vehicle, which is not always under full load, cannot be broken, right? Otherwise, the 5 Series BMW is quite chic and also a reliable colleague. Alternatively, all other engines are available, most of which are relatively low maintenance. The price starts at $9,500. You will have less equipment, but always remember that less can break. In this respect, do not shy away from fabric seats. You can completely convert the equipment to leather for a few hundred dollars and even with original parts. Let's continue with a car that few have on their radar. The Porsche Boxster 987, a car that looks like a smaller version of the 911, but still offers that certain Porsche prestige. First used models from 2005 can be had for just under $10,000. For that, you get 240 horsepower from a 2.7 liter six cylinder boxer engine with rear wheel drive. And because it's a Porsche, a blonde college girl may give you head because she'll think you're in a $120,000 car. Fake it till you make it, my friends. The next vehicle in today's video is large, mostly black. What do you mean by that? And often driven by girls because sitting up high reminds them of certain activities the Mercedes ML 320 CDI. Some are now asking, why not a Lexus? Simply because the Lexus SUVs of this generation look like my old physics teacher, a good guy on the inside, but you still don't want to look at him for more than 30 seconds. The second generation ML is actually pretty solid, especially with the OM 642 six-cylinder diesel engine. It lasts a lot with good maintenance, is economical, has solid torque, and annoys loopy eco-enthusiasts. Good models are available for around $9,000.
there are also plenty of tuning options. Most of the time you see these cars with fake AMG body kits or crooked AMG stickers that symbolize that the driver is an incel. But nonetheless, this German is reliable and doesn't break the bank. Next up, we have the BMW E6530i. We avoid first models because there were many problems with the electronics. A good compromise is the 530i from 2005. With 258 horsepower, this sedan is perfect for pretending to be a rich pimp. Although you could just about afford this car after numerous night shifts at the aforementioned trucker gas station. The E60 had frequent problems with the water pump, so be thorough before you buy. If you have small balls, it's also possible to upgrade to an M-body kit and add M5 rims for about $1,500. This will endear you to your crush. Trust me, well-maintained models start at $7,500. So let's move on to the Audi TT8J, where some people are trying to imitate R8 looks using a body kit. It is a desperate attempt to imitate something big bad male with something petite female to compensate for something small. How many brain synapses are already crippled in this act cannot be mathematically or logically comprehended. But instead of getting worked up about such idiots, let's briefly go into the main argument for why you should get a TT. It's fun. Period. The Audi TT8J is the second generation of the TT range, and there are already solid models for around $8,500. You get a 200 horsepower 2.0 TFSI. Conspicuous features are excessive wear on the camshaft and pump shocks. Since corking plays an important role in these engines, high-quality fuel is highly recommended to keep up the Audi reputation in the long run. Last but not least, we have the C-Class W204. Preference should be given to a six-cylinder from 2008 onwards. With this car, you have the possibility to mark the experienced stepdad at parties, because the C-Class likes to enjoy the reputation of being for pensioners. This C-Class is, in my opinion, one of the best Mercedes models you can get for under $10,000. Good models cost around $9,500 with the six-cylinder naturally aspirated engine. With regular oil changes, good gasoline, and long-distance driving, the engine will last until the next pandemic invented by the government. Pitbulls, that's it for the video today. I hope you were able to gain an insight into what is possible for $10,000. Note that something can always break, especially with cars of this category. So it's always a good idea to have a reserve to have access to in case of an emergency. Or you can go to Las Vegas with the reserves and increase the money tenfold. I mean, always remember, in gambling you can win 1,000%, but at most you can lose 100%. Think smarter. Leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel to not miss any new uploads.